It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our goal. Hey! It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey! So welcome, Tom. Thanks for being on the show. This is very exciting. I'm excited to be here. I mean, I feel like I need another invite where I get to, like, you know, hold you, eat bread, drink wine. You know what I mean? Like I know, I know. I was I thinking about that. It was like a treatment, man. I know. Well, I have a loaf of bread that is literally just came out of the oven God damn uh, it. like 30 minutes ago, and it's here. But fear not, because during this time, I'm making deliveries. You are? So I, I yes. So I will be bringing you this bread that I have right really? now. Really? Yes, 100%. Okay, I, I would really like that. Thank you. And I will, uh, I'll throw it to you. Whatever, you, whatever you're comfortable with, with the social distancing. Oh, I could man. either, I'm over I could, it. I could wear a mask and just hug you. I could, I could throw it over. I could just drive by like a like a newspaper and toss it onto the lawn. Listen, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. I am over it. I will rip your shirt off if you come up to my house. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I know. It. I feel like that. I feel like that's where we're all at. Fuck it. Give we're me, all at at this give point. Give me the virus. Watch me beat it. Watch. <laughs> I know. I know. I wish I had had it. Man, I really wish I had had I it. I wish so much that I wish they were. I wish that my doctor was giving me a call right now. Like, just so you know, we ran some blood work. You've definitely had it. I'm like, great, great, great. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go I lick know. some doorknobs. I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I am excited that you're here, and it, this is a uh, the the cool thing about this is you know from from your podcast is when you have your friends on, you get to ask them things that you didn't really know because when you're hanging out, you don't really get to ask these kind of questions. That's true. Um, you were you came from Ohio, right? I mean, I was I was born there. I lived there for the first nine years of of my life. Okay, so then we we moved around. Right. I lived in the Midwest, you know, Minneapolis. Milwaukee, and then we went down to Florida. Yeah, why did you move so much? It was my dad. You know, he was um, he was working with the same company, but he was getting promotions within you know a huge corporation, and they would move him to different cities. Um, so right. yeah, it, it became like the norm for me. Like I I just was used to going to a new school every few years. Right, right. I moved once when I was in third grade, and I'm still getting over it. You know, I found the uh, the early moves did were nothing to me. The hardest move was the last one because that was during freshman year in high school. That one was tough. Wow, freshman year, yeah, freshman that's year, rough. and I had just felt like you know, like when every time you move, you realize it takes you like two years to feel like okay, I'm established yeah. now with this crew. It's like when you're new at a club or something. You know, you need a few times right before you're like, all right, like I feel like. A regular now and so yeah that last one and then i think also when you're in like eighth grade ninth grade the social aspect to it is everything so you're finally like i have my crew i know where i fit in i know who my friends are and you're starting to figure out your identity as like a young person and then we move yeah. that time I, I i feel like that one i feel like i got over it last week it really fucked me up uh, <laughs> oh man yeah would they just cut with was it because it happened so often would they just say was it not so much of a big sit down would they just kind of like tell you oh yeah and by the way we're we're heading out again yeah or it's was funny it, you mentioned did they that. know i really can't even recall what the um what it looked like when they said we're moving yeah. i don't even remember it yeah. really interesting yeah. I don't they really remember it. <laughs> they probably they probably slow rolled it. Yeah, they probably. I like, think they tried to make so, the Florida um, thing really appealing, which is easy to do to a kid, you know, because like if you live right. anywhere else and they go, "We're moving to Florida," you just think of like beaches or like Disney, you know, and you're like, "Oh, yeah. cool, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, cool. I'll be in Disney with no friends. Yeah, I'll be alone with Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Great." <laughs> so what's your what's your Ethnic background. What are you? Where did your parents come from? So my uh, my mother's Peruvian, one hundred percent Peruvian, and then my right. father is, you know, a white guy, American white guy, uh, with a mixed uh, ancestry of Spanish, French, and some Irish blood. 
Ah, uh, okay. So yeah. we, how did they meet? My dad's did... best friend married my mom's sister. Your dad's best friend mm -hmm. married your mom's sister. Right. So my dad yeah. met my mom because his best friend had married this, this, uh, you know, spick woman from Peru. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a that must have been a little bit of a wake up call for him. What are the Peruvian people like? I don't really know the Peruvian people. Well, you know, it's like a lot of South America uh, where it's like um, there's a huge indigenous population, and then there's a minority of basically white Latin people. Um, uh huh. And uh, you know, they're very. <laughs> I mean, all my memories there are wonderful. Like. Really kind people, um, great food, great culture. Everyone, you know, Latins are more affectionate, um, very open yeah. with emotions, very expressive. That's one thing that was always like the balance in our house is my mother is very expressive and demands that you are as well. Um, and then uh -huh. my dad is like, yep, nope, that's good. You know, very, like kind of <laughs> limited, so... Um, yeah. Like one of their things, like in in, I think it's a common with a lot of Latin people. But like, if uh, if you eat food with us, and mm -hmm. you like, if if you go, my mom goes, "How is it?" And you're like, "Good." She goes, "You don't like it." Like that's what she would say if you said <laughs> it was good because good yeah. is like a polite way of being like it's okay. And if you go, right. "No, I really do like it," she goes, "Well, then say it." You express yourself, <laughs> like, and like it's very. <laughs> she wants you to be like, "Oh my God, this is amazing!" Yeah. Oh, I cannot tell. And then, <laughs> then she goes, "That's good. I like this. I like how you express yourself." So she wants you <laughs> to be effusive, you know. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Was she a good cook? She used to cook uh, quite a bit. I mean, now there's like this kind yeah. of running joke in the household of you know about how it's just. She must have forgotten. She doesn't really do it anymore. But then, you know, right. with, a, with her and her, she's 75, you know, she'll be like, I cooked mm -hmm. for 40 years for your children, for your father. I'm done cooking. So she <laughs> doesn't really do that much anymore. But then every once in a while, you know, yeah. if I ask her for something, I'm yeah. visiting, she'll make some crazy, awesome dish. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed her cooking. Huh? What would she? What would she make when you were a kid? There was, you know, there's like kind of the regular rotation of things, but I, I mean, I love mm -hmm. like there's a few really good Peruvian dishes. Um, lomo, ta lomo saltado is one where it's like beef strips. It's a very popular dish. There's beef, rice. Uh -huh. uh, really authentic way is choclo, which is a corn with like the huge kernels. Corn comes from Peru, uh, and potatoes. Some people don't know that. Oh, really? Um, Really? Yeah, this type of that's corn comes from there, and the potato is from Peru. Um, oh. Like, yeah, it actually, you know, spread from there um, when the savage Spaniards came and raped and pillaged my people. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and made a deal with the Irish. That's right. And then gave them some potatoes, <laughs> and you know, the rest is history. But yeah, I mean, there was like the beef stew stuff, uh, ají de gallina, another like a... a chicken dish um from from peru but we, i feel like we had like you know a, a rotation of like beef dishes there was all the, mm. the the italian stuff was pretty basic for our house like there was always a rotation of like a spaghetti and meatballs or uh, a lasagna right. but never like like you know when you go to certain households and they like really do hardcore yeah. italian dishes we just had yeah. that kind of stuff but then Back then, my mother was also, my mother loves sweets. She's one of these people, uh -huh. she weighs 105 pounds, and you're like, all you eat <laughs> is sugar. How is this possible? Like, all you eat. She eats panettone, yeah. which is like Italian sweet bread, and uh -huh. she just, like, she would make merengues, like people usually know that's like that a pastry, a puffed uh, pastry that has like that, I don't even know how to describe it, like it breaks open and it's like soft. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a meringue. Yeah, it's like all I light is, and airy. Yes, very yeah. airy. She make merengues, uh, turrones de Doña Pepa, which is like um, a dough that's rolled into these long, uh, like tube-like dough, and then it has this right. cream, like this dark 
uh, basting over it. I'm doing a horrible job of describing, but all these like sweets. I mean, she just loves sweets and she would bake those when I was a kid quite a bit. She would make her own um, marmalade, you know, like jam. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Which, holy shit, oh, I'd always good. been like kind of indifferent <laughs> towards jelly and jams. Like I didn't, I wasn't yeah. opposed to it. I wasn't a fan. And then one day she's make. I'm smelled it. I'm like, what is this? I smell it. And she's making strawberry marmalade and oh. with just like, I don't know, like just bags of sugar into this thing. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. You know, you take a bite and I was like, oh my God. And then she was like, <laughs> you put this on some toast with my cheese and this is a great breakfast. And that's how she would like <laughs> start her day. Oh with like man. 800 <laughs> grams of sugar. <laughs> Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And she's a healthy per- it's ridiculous. Like she has no business yeah. having her health, <laughs> but she does. And when you would travel when you would travel to Peru, did was that common with all, with the other people there? Is that just the way the Peruvians eat? Are they uh, it's are a sweet? really interesting way they eat, you know. Also, by the way, ceviche, a lot of people don't know because everybody does a ceviche. Oh. Ceviche is a Peruvian dish. And then all the oh. spin-offs that you've seen are all a take on what they do. So that's um another that was something right. I learned a lot as a kid was ceviche. But um it's so funny when you describe when you when you take credit for the Peruvian stuff, it's exactly what my whole family does with Italian stuff. Oh yeah. Everyone's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. They make bread, but we did it first. Of course. <laughs> there's such a pride, you know. There's such a pride. I think there's also like, you know, if you're Italian, it's like almost like people know to like Italian things, you know, like it's not like this. Yeah. But like with Peru, there is such this complex of you're like, we, you got to make a point to tell people some of the things we've yeah. done, you know, because right, <laughs> like everyone's going to be like, yeah, we know the Incas. What else? Like anything else? <laughs> so they're really <laughs> yeah. like driving it home that this is ours. But yes, yeah. every culture the same way. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was i saying oh yeah uh, the but food we, there food is it's really i just always loved like for me as an american like everything for me is all about breakfast you know i'm a big breakfast guy i love yeah breakfast food and american breakfast foods and you know uh-huh. a big breakfast for me is just a dream i love it i love having it all yeah the a- I, I, i'll like eat the... eggs 15 different ways <laughs> I love yep. <laughs> the breakfast meats. I love it. I mm-hmm. love the sweets. The whole thing is like just yeah, the best. Down there, Heaven. breakfast is almost uh, non-existent. I mean, you go down yeah. um, to... First of all, everybody has fucking servants. It's just like the norm in Latin America. <laughs> they just all have R- these uh, people like serving you, and you're like, this is the best, dude. Why can't we have this? Um, but like regardless of, regardless of of how wealthy you are oh yeah no yeah 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 like somebody who's a secretary at an office goes home and has somebody cleaning for them you know it's just, <laughs> right there's just such i mean it's it's because there's obviously a huge gap in like um income and and you know there's a there's a whole yeah. host of reasons why that's the reality in a lot of parts yeah. of the world but one of the things when you wake up for breakfast you go downstairs what we would have mostly down there would be there'd be slices of bread, uh, slices of meat and cheese. So a common thing would be like grab a piece of bread, a turkey slice uh-huh. and a slice of cheese. And like, that's it. That like, they'd be like, you know, that's breakfast. You're like, <laughs> right. wait, 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 what? But then <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I'm like, this is, I mean, is this the appetizer? We're like, no, that's it. That's breakfast. Um, <laughs> I just picture you so sad, just sitting there with that. In your so hand, sad. Like, all right. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm going, what about pancakes? Yeah, it's just so sad. Was my waffles. I want some some more sugar. Nothing. Um, but then no. lunch, like a lot of parts of the world, is a showstopper down there. Lunch is uh, where it's at. So even if you're like right. at school, at work, you could go home, and there would be like four and five course lunches where. Wow. You know, it's a production. Like you sit at, at a table. I mean, a lot of times I sat at a table that was, you know, de- decked out. Like that you would like when you're having guests over for dinner, that was a regular thing for lunch. So fully, wow. fully decorated table <laughs> and and like Jeez. and really a heavy, heavy lunch. That's like the big, big meal. 
and it's supposed to, like you know i kind of like the logic of it and they're like well you know it's like yeah middle of the day and then i never thought of it before because i was so used to like mo- modest lunches are kind of the norm and i would say in the states and then you know dinner yeah. is the showstopper but right. down there they would be like yeah but dinner's before bed why would you want a huge dinner and then you go like i don't know because we're fat like <laughs> <laughs> That's just what right. we do. Because we don't think of things. Yeah. I never stop to, <laughs> m- to think of your logical point. But yeah. So, yeah, dinner would be like a much more reasonable um, meal, you know, like something smaller, right. like almost compared to like yeah. what we think of lunch here. Like just, hey, you know, small piece of, of whatever, chicken yeah. and then a little, little salad. And they're like, that's dinner. But lunches would be elaborate, man. I mean, elaborate. You know, just so that means someone in the house was working on that all morning. Absolutely, yeah. It was like you would have your breakfast and you know leave for the day at let's say eight thirty in the morning or something, and from that mm-hmm. moment until you know one, somebody was doing a lot of work in the kitchen. Yeah, for like four right. or five hours, and that would be like those those beef dishes and things that you were talking oh, about oh yeah like bi- bi- beef dishes rice fish um you know and and it, they might bring you like this a soup with uh you know vegetables and and, and meat or something uh, for like a, a right. first dish and then rice chicken <laughs> uh shrimp and uh, some seafood thing and that would come after that and then there would be like a dessert and there would it would be multiple dishes, and you were like, "Holy shit!" And then yeah. you're like, "Yeah, a lot of people take a nap right now." And you're like, "Yeah, I can see why. This is a nappy yeah. food." Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. I know because you think about the way we do it, and you have like a a little salad or something small for lunch, and still at two o'clock, you're doing everything you can to stay on your feet. Everything, yes, and like you can right? feel it, I'm, like it's you know heavy eyes, and and yeah, I mean, when <laughs> yeah. I did a I did a semester abroad in spain and i lived like a, a, with an old lady and she would she would command me to nap after lunch she was like <laughs> go to the room and take a nap and i'm like oh i i have work to do she was like after your nap you can do the work <laughs> she was like, made Hilarious. a thing i'm like okay yeah it's great man so what so where did, so then where did your mom's little pastry mornings come from that was just her sweet tooth and she just decided this yeah, I think, I'm gonna I think that came from missing where she came from. So, I, you know, she came over to the uh-huh. States. When she married my dad, she, she spoke like 10 words of English and she was already 32 or something, 33 maybe. Right. So she really was used to growing up in, in a whole different culture and world and having that food readily available. And I think right. that sweet tooth that she was always trying to satiate with things here you know, ultimately mm-hmm. you, you love what you grew up with, you know, like, so Right. I think no matter what she tried here, I mean, she loved desserts and, and, and pastries, but she was missing what she was used to, you know, the, the, the food right. that she grew up with. So yeah, she would have, you know, like a lot of people, these cookbooks with handwritten notes, like that was like from her mother and her mother's mother. And it was all the, her little right. secret recipes on how to make these things. And then my mother would always do that thing of apologize for how bad her version is and and uh <laughs> you you could never compliment her that what she did was good you know oh that's really what, yeah yeah when i think of my mother that's what i think of, of of being like this was delicious she's like no i i'm no good at it but you know <laughs> if, if my sister was here her version is good and you're like mom this is great it's not it's not great okay. <laughs> oh that's so sad yeah <laughs> but it was good. It was good. And it was like, it's just her, per- it, you you know, you just know certain people's psychological makeup and she's very, you know, has that South American yeah. Catholic guilt and um, mm-hmm. anxiety and e- everything that she wants, uh, you know, whatever she likes, she doesn't deserve and whatever she makes, it is right. good. <laughs> yeah. You're like, this is a really <laughs> yeah. healthy way to look at things. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> when you met uh, her sisters or y- your grandmother, if you were lucky enough to see them, yeah, uh, was their stuff really good? Was it better? Was she right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but 
you know, <laughs> what she made was pretty good too. No, she had a couple. You know, she had yeah. some great dishes. Um, I'd say that the the one sister was just more into cooking too. You know, like would really. Yeah, I mean, she was good, but she was also like doing it every day. So you know, naturally, right, right. had great dishes. Um, right, was she cook. was that one making the lunch all morning. Yeah, yeah, she was really, really, you know, devout cook in the house and uh i never really had the my grandmother's cooking you know I, I i met her and i spent time with her but i was too young and then I, yeah i never had her cooking oh no no uh-uh. did you did you grow up like knowing your grandparents well yeah i did my um i had all three i had three grandparents that were alive the, my one grandfather i never i never got a chance to meet um, but my two grandmothers uh, were always cooking up a storm, and especially the one grandmother on my father's side. She was the one who I have all of those classic memories of Sundays in an Italian family kind of get together with all the cousins and stuff. And she just, from this tiny little kitchen, you know, I mean, small, like apartment sized setup, you know, like a small stove and a small oven, and uh, she would crank out these just classic endless meals. I don't even know how she did. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, when I think about my kitchen now and, like, what I can crank out of it, she was doing so much more with so much less, but she was just so good at it. So it's just, like, any Italian food is just, I, I it's all set against comparing what, what she was doing. Isn't it funny, too, when you learn about, like, because, you know, Italian cuisine is so well known. And, like, most of us grew up, I think, I feel like most of us knew at least an Italian family that the yeah. food was, like, the centerpiece of that home. I, I remember multiple yeah. families like that. And then you you learn that, like, the Americans' idea of what Italian cooking is versus, like, what you end up yeah. learning about Italian cooking, you know how it, I mean, there's this yeah. like, there's this restaurant in the South Bay where this guy, it's an uh -huh. Italian restaurant. And, but he only does like one, he does his, where he grew up, his region's cooking in Northern Italy. And it's fucking amazing, amazing restaurant. I'll, right. I got to look it up. Right. I'll send you the information. But like, I feel like I took yeah. my dad there. My dad's one of the only people that I can think of that when you think of traditional Italian food, he's like, yeah, I don't like it. I'm like, how do you not like Italian food? <laughs> like, you're the only human yeah. being I know. And he loves food, but he's like, I <laughs> don't like yeah. pasta, pizza, uh, sauces. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? But wow. I took him there. That's weird. And because it wasn't like, you know, your quote, noodles and marinara sauce, he was like, no, this food's not right. Italian. I'm like, the yeah, Southern. it's Italian. It's Italian. It's also Italian. <laughs> <laughs> was it it wasn't that sauce the red sauce south kind of stuff it was more of the yeah it was, it was the lighter northern stuff it was lighter northern stuff fish dish i mean incredible food right um, and this is this right. guy was like i cook these 15 dishes from my hometown and that's mm -hmm. it and that's when you know you're at least <laughs> probably in a good spot when someone's like yeah, i don't even fuck yes. with anything else i just do <laughs> I know. what i do <laughs> Like I wish more restaurants were like that. Like not trying to do something they don't yeah. do. Do what you do really well. Yeah, I know. There was a place that just did cannolis, oh. and that was it. It's like that's all I'm going to do. And there was another one uh, that just made napoleons, just this other dessert. And which always like the, the Italian desserts for me were always like a little kind of strange. It was always mm -hmm. like. There, uh, there was a, there was something, something fruity, something, and I was always trying to like find my way. And this guy was just like, "No, this is just the only thing I make. I, I make Napoleons, and I, <laughs> that's all my grandfather made. That's what I make. We make Napoleons, and it was just like one dish. They're just making this <laughs> one dish. I love. And you're it. like, you know what? That's kind of how life should be. I love. You can't it. be that yeah. good at that many things. You know. I did. I mean, think about, you know, L.A., one thing we have so much of in L.A., we have a lot of, of burger places and taco places. Mm -hmm. And some of them, yeah. like, really are like, yeah, yeah, we have three burgers. And, um, yeah. you know, you can get fries. <laughs> and you're like, okay. 
<laughs> they don't do anything yeah. else, but they make a killer I burger. Know. Um, I same know. with the taco places, man. Like, you know, you start trying to get fancy with some of them, and they're like, yeah, we don't do that, man. We have tacos. <laughs> Right, exactly. That's the way it should be, though. You just kind of dial in and get good at a certain number of things. Do you cook on your own? Do you, do you and Christina cook? I cook way less than I used to. I used to be uh-huh. a little more uh, active in the kitchen, making things. And I, right. don't, I don't know why. Right. I don't know. I kind of miss it a little bit. She's been cooking when did way you stop? more, especially in quarantine. She's been killing it, dude. Oh, yeah? Oh, my God. Really? Quar- quarantine wife has is a home run. Like <laughs> she even hit friends up and started being like, "Send me your favorite recipe. Like, what? Send me a recipe that you love." Wow! So she's been making other people's recipes. Unbelievable, man. Yeah, that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. I'm, now does I'm she digging it. does she skew? Does she skew with Polish cooking? Is she is she Polish? So she's Hungarian seems- and she makes. Um, hung- yeah, she makes some Hungarian. She made one the other day that I've never had before. That like you could taste. You could feel your arteries shutting down because it had like <laughs> potatoes, sausage, eggs, cheese. I was like, oh my what God. the fuck is this? She was like, yeah. <laughs> like, so heavy. And it was delicious. It was delicious. But yeah, yeah. Like, the Hungarian diet is like hardcore. <laughs> There's like, <laughs> right. There is, it's Getting like, th- you want meat with more meat? And <laughs> it was great. <laughs> um, and some cream. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, and then they put sour cream on it, and they put sour cream on everything. So like, oh it was my this god, huge heavy dish, and then she's like, oh hold on, and then a spoonful of sour cream on top of it. Um, <laughs> chicken paprikash is like their <laughs> national dish. She makes a great one of those, right? Um, wow. Yeah, but she's been doing all these other dishes that like people send. A couple Italian dishes, um, amazing some chicken stuff. Don't I mean, you the only feel thing that like... I do regularly at the house is grill. I grill. Okay. Um, but I've stopped. Like, yeah. I used to make a few dishes, and I really haven't in a long time. Well, it's kind of like one person seems to take over. That's kind yeah. of what's happened in my house, where it's like I'm cooking all the time. And I just, uh, and she just kind of like, I can feel like around the end of the day, she kind of disappears. Yeah. <laughs> because she knows that, like, if I just go away for a little bit, there's a good chance when I come back, there's going to be food here around 630. Dude, I'm your wife. That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I just see her now in the afternoon. I'm like, uh, what? So has, what are we doing for dinner? And I ask like, like, hey, let's discuss it. But what I'm really asking is like, what are you making? You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. When you were a kid, when you were, when your mom was obviously the cook. Mm-hmm. If you if you had like your birthday or if you weren't feeling well, was she, was there something that your mother would make? That was Tommy's, Tommy's dish. Well, I remember when you said sick. I always we always did a, a chicken noodle soup for for being sick. You know, right? Which is, right. Even now, like if someone mentions it when I'm sick, I feel like I start to feel better. Just like <laughs> I I do feel like the formula to getting over yeah. um, something is chicken noodle soup. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like it, it must be something psychological because I feel like I'll start to taste. Yeah that broth and i'm like yeah i could feel the antibodies kicking in i don't know how it happens (laughs) i I think it's your i think i thought about this too and i think it's just the love of who's ever making it for you yeah and giving it to like there's there's there there's that feeling like oh somebody's somebody's taking care care of me (laughs) like you're feverish you're lightheaded you know you're feeling weird but all of a sudden, someone comes through the mist, and it's always your mom. It's your mom, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, now what type I'm going to make you feel better. What type of sick guy are you? Are you good when you're sick, or are you like a baby? No, I'm 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 good. I'm not a baby. I get quiet. I just get. I I have this overwhelming feeling that I can control it with my mind. Whoa, you're Christina. <laughs> And I feel like if I just don't cop to it and just grind it out, I'll uh, I'll get through this. You guys like, are the uh, same. I got to tell you something. In I've been with Christina <laughs> for fifteen years, and I've seen yeah. her sick three times. I get sick <laughs> yeah. five times a year. And, oh man! And I'm always. Are you a like, baby? I'm like, change my diaper. I'm sick. I'm such a baby. <laughs> 
And I'm like, who's taking care of me in this house? Like, I'm, I'm terrible. And it's probably because your mom probably took care of you. Yes. She took care of me. Christina, it's unbelievable. She'll be like, I'm starting to not feel well. And then the next morning, she'll look better. I'm like, what happened? She's like, well, I used my mind and I fought it in, the, in my sleep and now I'm better. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how I am. I always feel like my the greatest pride I have in that technique is being at dinner like the next day and being like, yeah, I was really sick the last two days. And everyone <laughs> looks at you like, what? <laughs> how could you, you were? Yeah. Like, right. yeah. I fought it. Yeah, no, I, I knocked it out. I'm not, I'm all right. <laughs> I don't I wish I had that. I'm I I just I don't know. I come down hard, I feel like too. I don't you know I yeah. get, I, I get yeah. sinus infections and colds and no, I man. don't know. I thought about yeah. when, I, when when this thing popped up and I was like I remember how sick I got like a month ago, month no, now it's like two months ago and I was like, Oh, that's what that was. I must have had COVID. Um Yeah. And then I was and all then you got tested? Out. That I feel like it's not. <laughs> yeah. I know. Did you get tested for it? I got. I had. I had an antibody test. I didn't get. A yeah, COVID. me too. And the antibody test is negative. And then, mm -hmm. uh, like a week or two after I got my test, they're like, "Oh, there's a bunch of false negatives." I'm like, "Oh, great." So they're like, "Don't trust <laughs> your test." I'm like, "Really reassuring, guys." Yeah. Thank you. I know. I know. But that was my thing too. Is like I. I didn't have it didn't have the antibody and i was got in the car like that test was wrong i totally had it <laughs> it's like what part of science i was it, like it's never enough like it's always comes down to whatever folklore you have in your head exactly exactly <laughs> so when you when you think of when you think of yourself do you think i had no idea by the way that you were so fluent in spanish and when you started you did your special in Spanish, and I was just like, oh, this is a goof. This is funny. This is a funny Instagram angle that Tom has. And then it was like, no, this is legit. Like, he, I I don't know why. I just never, I didn't, I guess because I was naive of the Peruvian culture. Yeah, and also, like, like, I mean, part of it is, like, the aesthetic of it. Let's face it, like, I'm a white guy yeah. with blue eyes, and, like, nobody assumes that I have any, you know, other blood in my yeah. body. Um, my yeah, Spanish, but once by I the knew way, it and then look, my Spanish yeah. deteriorated a bunch. Like that's what doing the podcast again <laughs> taught me. Like so, I uh -huh. I started. I I did a show because I have some friends who are doing shows in Spanish here in town. And I was like, you know, I always wanted to see if I could do a set. So I did the set, yeah. and I had a good time. And um, I was like, okay, I can do this. You know, I want to do it more. I need to practice yeah. Spanish though, because I, I didn't realize in my mind I was like, you know, my Spanish is still pretty damn good, even though I haven't used it that yeah. much. But what I learned was that by actually speaking more, it became evident to me how much it had deteriorated. Like I wasn't aware of uh -huh. it. So then right. I started doing the podcast and you could if you actually watch episode one of the podcast, even for like thirty seconds. And then you watch episode yeah. eight or nine, you'll be like, oh my God, this is a huge <laughs> leap in like fluency because it, uh. it basically, I wasn't using it enough, you know? So that's what I, I, I try to do now is I do the podcast to try to talk to somebody for an hour. And then, you know, I hired a tutor just to like jump on Skype with me and talk for an hour. Like I, I realized that wow. back when it was really high level, it was because I was speaking it all the time, you know? And right. there's yeah, really no way life. to mimic that unless you move somewhere, you know? Right, right. What a cool thing. No, do, I'm do excited. you feel like Yeah, that's exciting. I mean, do you feel like I mean, you obviously have pride like we were talking about earlier, like when you're making sure that I know that potatoes and corn come from Peru. Correct. You have a would you say you have a Peruvian pride that you is that part of what's fueling your rediscovering of the language and is it yeah. something you want to pass on to your children and let them know where they came from it, it i mean the the pride part is definitely part of it i mean I, I you know it's a big part of my yeah childhood i mean obviously it's you know my mother but i i spent a lot of time there when i was a, a kid growing yeah. up i would spend entire summers there i would go to school I, you know i have i'm very yeah. close with some family down there and i've always i always wanted to do something in spanish so 
when we yeah. pitch them, we pitched Netflix the idea of doing a special in Spanish. They, they, it's the only thing I've ever pitched them where they were like, "Yep, right away." <laughs> Everything wow, else, I'm like, yeah. Uh, Do you guys like me? But this, <laughs> right. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked. We were supposed to shoot it, yeah. um, in the early fall, and obviously now that's going to be delayed quite a bit. Um, right. But I still think it'll right. come together. But yeah, it is like a a pride uh, excitement thing. Have you ever did you did you grow yeah. up speaking Italian? No, my parents' generation, they were the ones that were told drop the language and right. act and become American and you know, it was all about assimilating. So they lost it and so they didn't so then I didn't get to do it. And then of course when our generation came along it was like no, this is the time when, you know, there's pride in that and we should all be and that that I don't speak Italian is such a um a bothersome thing in my head all the time. Yeah, it's I such, really would love to be able to speak it. It's such a beautiful language and I'll tell you you could like, you know, you could do the same place that I I I get uh, speak with somebody to try to keep what I have up and improve and going. Mm -hmm. But you can do the same yeah. thing with Italian with one of their people where they you know, they give you some basic stuff but it, the the thing about a language is you realize the way to get good at it the way to become proficient at it is just speak it mm -hmm. and um if you're just right. on a skype you know a zoom call or whatever with someone looking at them and you're trying to speak italian uh you'll you'll yeah. get better at it you'll be able to speak some italian yeah man. really it seems so daunting it seems like i'm coming from nothing i'm coming from chow and chicken parmesan yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like i, I think you would so really little. be surprised with yourself at what you're able to do with um yeah yeah with just trying it's like it the thing is like everybody when they are trying to speak a language you go like oh but then i'll fuck that up and you're like yeah and then the native speaker will be like right. here's how to say it and then you'll start re then you'll right. realize that like that one interaction you learned how to say the thing correctly and now it's in your head right so now the next right, time you greet right. them you know you buongiorno and you'll do your thing and then yeah. you're like oh now i know how to greet them like it's just becomes right, automated right. and those little I was pieces about put it, it together i was thinking about it the other day when i was reading something and i came across a french word and it's so funny that even when i you read it in my head, not even saying it out loud, I get embarrassed that I can't pronounce it. Hilarious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, you just walk reading English, 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 Tour de France, and, and then you keep <laughs> going. And it's like, oh, it's just, you. Feel, I don't know what it is that makes you feel so stupid. I've gone back and forth <laughs> with trying to uh, to go like, all right, I'm going to try to do another language just just for like my own enjoyment you know yeah um, yeah yeah and i've always done a little bit of french and i started doing this french mm -hmm. course online and enjoying it and then i'm like you know yeah. but like italian is much easier for a spanish speaker much easier sure the yeah yeah pronunciations the, the the way the sentences are structured i'm like man right and then i go like i love the disdain that the French have for people and for me, so it's kind of hard, you know, to choose. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. it fits my attitude. It fits but... my personality. They don't like me. I don't like me. Like, I should go there. You know? <laughs> I did a, I did this cooking thing with a, um, a chef. I think she was Brazilian, mm -hmm. and she was showing me how to make this dish. It was, it was pretty much like a traditional uh, but elaborate rice and beans kind of dish. Yeah. And it was so funny to me how she, you know, I cook all the time, but it's mostly Italian and mm -hmm. Italian-American. And just her little things of just add cumin to this and put these and add this spice and add that thing. And I was totally entering her culture with her. Yeah. Like it literally was opening up something that to me is always so foreign and I only get in a restaurant or if I'm, uh, you know, traveling or that kind of a thing. And it was like, oh, my God, like that this smell doesn't happen in my in my kitchen. Right. right. 
you know what? It, does that make sense? Yeah. Like yeah. all of a sudden, like when you talk about the Hungarian thing, it's like all of a sudden the ghosts from that from her life kind of like enter the enter your kitchen. You're right. And it really is the thing that can pull you closer to somebody you don't know. And like uh and a world yeah. and a culture you have basically no exposure to. If somebody mm -hmm. you know, if you walk into a house, like I said, it could be Hungarian, it could be Pakistani, Turkish, Italian, whatever, and they start throwing things yeah. in a pot. You know, and uh, uh, all of a yeah. sudden you smell something. What is this? And then, you yeah. know, you can feel like you're a part of that family um, just by their the smells and the food, you know? Yo, 100%, 100%. And it always has somebody at the helm. Like, there's always, yeah. like, that dynamic of the family. Like, there's that thing of, like, you start to understand what the relationship is with all of these people just from who's in control of that, that moment in the kitchen. Exactly. It's usually Big Mama, but yeah, there's usually somebody there yeah. right, that runs. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, yeah. big, it's Big Papa and, in your house, but you know, Big Mama in a lot of houses. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. I know. Man, I got to come to your house. Dude, you should come over. We should, when, <laughs> listen, I'm going to, I want her to put it on for you, like the big time <laughs> hungo <laughs> stuff. We'll have a paramedic Does she waiting do any nearby. <laughs> you're right <laughs> yeah. does she do any of the peruvian stuff or is, is that not really because you're not cooking no, is that not in the, the house is that stuff. not in the house no yeah i gotta get her on that but she's been doing she's really been i'm telling you quarantine wife has really been hitting home runs man <laughs> i saw a thing impressive. in your in your podcast how she was talking about how she's manipulating you through the during this quarantine yeah She's like, have she's... you picked it up that I'm manipulating you with, with food and sex? And I'm like, I mean, I haven't really thought of it as manipulation, you know? Yeah. I thought it was just a spouse showering their spouse yeah. with love. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. This is to get you to do things that you don't even realize. I'm like, I guess you're playing chess up here, but I was just kind of going through the motions. How are you feeling about uh, not being on stage? Like, is it having a... Um a slow burn effect on your personality. Yep. Yeah, um, me too. I thought I was fine. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. it was pointed out to me that I'm much more aggressive and um, <laughs> I have a shorter fuse. Yeah. Things are uh -huh. bothering me. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's actually, it's funny, like I, I don't know how many people can relate to this, but as a, as a comic, I kind of, you know, I, I just, ex I always accept things like the reality of situations, you know? So I just go like, well, this is what it yeah. is. And so yeah. I was going through it like that. Like, well, I mean, clubs yeah. are closed and you can't do stand up, so you can't do stand up. Um, and yep. I was like, I'm fine with that. I'm just accepting reality. But then I started yeah. to realize that I started to treat the podcast, especially your mom's house, which is kind of its own world and has all these, you know, there's like a million inside jokes and bits. And I started yeah. to look at it, not even consciously, like uh -huh. subconsciously, I looked at it as a performance. So I would go into yeah. the podcast and like when I do like two bears with Bert or I do, you know, Christina's uh -huh. show or Doc, I, I just sit there and I, I talk, I have a conversation like this, but on your mom's house, sure, I feel like I can like kind of turn up my, um, almost like my stage persona, you know, a little more. Uh -huh. And I realized yeah. I was fully gearing up for those shows like, like a performance. And I would, I was right trying to find some, some like payoff to that because I, I think it's because I miss performing that much, you know, like it wasn't, you weren't doing, you weren't doing that before all of this. I mean, you were, I you think were a little more, a little bit, but I feel like now, uh, I, I, a part of me really misses performing. And so I look forward right. to that podcast, like a chance to do a show. Yeah. You know what I mean, right. And like, yeah. real, and like yeah. now that like the bits, I'm like, all right, let's like, I really try to flush out the bit and figure it out because yeah. it's like the only chance to do one. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I'd never do thought you feel of it. Like you, it. It wasn't calculated, do you, you know, it just kind of happened. Yeah. No, right, exactly. That's how I that's how I feel about about the the change in me in 
with not performing right now. It's it's not a conscious thing at all. You just all of a sudden poke your head up f- six weeks later, and you're like, I'm slightly different. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm a, I'm a little I'm a little different now than I when I very first started like open mics and started all that and got like a year and a half in and that's not even performing that much you know in the early days you're just you know you get a spot now and again and then I had to stop I had to stop and take care of some family stuff for a, a while and I didn't perform pretty much for a year and I remember like laying on my sister's bed and saying am I even funny anymore like I was yeah. a- I was literally asking her like am I the same person right now and that feeling has kind of come back to me a little bit during this period it's like you slowly subconsciously are just slightly different it's almost like you're turning canadian (laughs) that's that's a good way of putting it i mean you look the same you look the same but you're not one of us and go back to your country (laughs) but yeah i definitely feel like Part of it was a lack of awareness. Like you said, I I wasn't mm-hmm. conscious of it. And then another part of it was I don't think I was being honest about it. Like, you know, uh-huh. whenever somebody would ask me, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I'm fine. And like, I wasn't fine. Yeah. I'm not fine right. with it. I, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, uh, I do miss do you... it. It's very much a part of my identity. You know what it reminds me of, dude, when I, when I think of it actually is that when I went to college, I went to a small school and I did not play football in college Uh and that was the first time in 10 years that I didn't play football and I realized when I was a freshman I was like oh like so much of my identity has been playing this sport and now it's it's not it's not it's not who I am yeah and like yeah you know this period feels like that where it's like you know I so identify as a comic and as a Uh standup uh-huh And then it kind of feels like, yeah, we're like on this hiatus that's weird, but like how long will it go? (laughs) And then yeah, the more time that goes by, it's like, well, then who, who, you know, what's my identity? Who am I? Yeah. (laughs) Right. When you were, when you were in school, because I went through a very similar thing. I played since kindergarten until 12th grade and went to school and was no longer an athlete. What, who did you become when, who did you become freshman year? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I became the kid that overdosed, and um, <laughs> I, uh, right. <laughs> I um, yeah, I leaned into you know comedy, like being a, a funny guy, not like class clown, but uh-huh. like I would always yeah. you know try to do. I was trying to like produce funny videos and you know yeah just be that yeah. guy. But I, I think there was a period where I was trying to figure it out too, like what yeah. what is this identity? Um, yeah, you know, eventually I smoked a I, lot of weed. And- a lot listen of weed. to the grateful dead <laughs> there was a lot of weed yeah. for me too man yeah. <laughs> yeah and you know that's it's interesting because now like whenever i t- whenever like you're traveling on the road and you go to a small town or whatever and you're like could i live here could i could i like live in this little tiny town and uh-huh. you know especially when you're really busy and and you're like man maybe it would be smart just to unplug and just go live a simple life. And I'm like, yeah, I think I probably could. But then my second thought is always, I'd be so high. (laughs) Something would have to occupy my brain. I have that too. And I also have the, um, the delusion that I enjoy a slow paced life. And Uh (laughs) the truth is I know that I need to be near a big city to feel. Yeah and like comfortable and uh-huh. I'll be like oh I love your small mountain town and the truth is I love it for like a fucking weekend I mean then I I, I really need to be near a city <laughs> it took me a while is that weird out. that's yeah I wonder if it because you moved around so much you it was like that unsettled kind of thing it's like the city kind of provides a, something different almost every day yeah Maybe and that's the thing that you know part, what the funny thing part. too is about the city thing for me I don't need to do anything the city offers, but I need to know it's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm not going to I'm not going to the beach. I'm not going Dude, to the Disney Hall. <laughs> every, I go to New York a few times a year. Every time I go, you know, I'm like, I love it. People are, what'd you do? I'm like, I went to the lobby of my hotel and then 
I went back up to my room. I don't know. I didn't do anything. But I just, <laughs> right. I just like being yeah. in the city. Yeah. When you're in a city like that, when you're when you go to New York, uh, what 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 is the? And you're like, oh man, I'm in. This is a world class city. This is everybody, Peruvian, Hungarian, American, Italian. Everyone who's ever the top of every one of those cultures is here and ready to feed my fat face. Mm-hmm. Is there one that you pull the trigger on more than another? You know, I um, I'll always do. I kind of go through the same routine every time I'm in New York, which is, you know, I try to stay in a cool hotel because I love, you know, as as travelers like we are, like New York's one of the places where you can actually for years just try different hotels and you still haven't hit yeah. like a fraction of them. So uh-huh. I try to stay somewhere cool. Usually the good hotels will have a good, at least, you know, dining option there. Yeah. And then, then I'll also do, it's like one of the a few places where when I go, I'll try to find some awesome restaurant that, what that, you know, like a Michelin star place that is an experience. Cause I feel like yeah. New York also offers that where you go, right. oh, I want to, I want to experience something I've never experienced before. So right. I'll try to look up That's whatever. Cool. And then, yeah. And then like, you know, give a, a shout to a friend and try to go to some awesome restaurant. Yeah. And then uh, it's, it is right. also the kind of city where most places you know, you try to get a recommendation from hotel or somebody and they just i don't know what, why some people they just they don't know how to re- recommend a restaurant in so many <laughs> cities but in new york yeah i'll take recommendations <laughs> and they'll be out of control yeah yeah that's a good point it's almost like it's 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 such a wild open place like if you need a guide and people are so past people who live there or know they they're just a lot more dialed in and you kind of need that guide to get through that giant jungle you do you need the i i've discovered i had a um a routine that i figured out for when you travel to like smaller places and you go like Uh hey um after i'm trying to go to a great restaurant afterwards they'll be like what um what kind of restaurant? You're like, well, like, what's awesome in this town? And they're like, uh, yeah. I like this one place. And then you go, and it'll just be bar food. And you're like, what the fuck is this? And you're, they're like, this is where I go. And then I discovered what you what you have to ask people is, um, hey, where do rich people go? And then they're, they're like, what? And you're like, you know, like rich people. Like, where would you go on an anniversary or something? And then right. they, in the small town, they'll recommend like the best restaurant in town. You're like, oh, okay. So yeah. this is the code I should speak in when I'm in your town. I should just be like, where did you take your kid for graduation? Where did you celebrate That's the anniversary? Yeah. Yeah, where did you go? Where do you go for your anniversary, birthday, Christmas? Yeah, you say the or like <laughs> Every, you say the the rich people. The and then they'll go. They'll go. It's real expensive. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the name of that place? <laughs> right. That's where I want to go when I'm here. Oh, one time I was on a I was on a motorcycle trip with my wife, and Whoa. we were in Wisconsin motorcycle somewhere. Trip. Yeah, we were on a on a on a bike. We went Whoa. cross country, and um. Who are you? We were. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I have many identities. And then it, it was. Uh, it was early morning. We're at a gas station and we're filling up to start the day. And my wife asked them, uh, "Where's a good place for breakfast around oh here?" And he said, "Breakfast." And, he's, and he, he calls over to his friend. And he goes, "Hey, Carl, is the bowling alley open yet?" <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> The only place to get food was the bowling alley. That's not a good breakfast, I promise. <laughs> we just know we just left town. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that is the other side of it, isn't it? When you're traveling around. Oh yeah. It's like when you can't when you're when you want to eat and you can't find it, and you've obviously you know good food, you've grew up on good food, you eat good food. And when you go through a whole day where it's been nothing but misses oh talk about your personality changing (laughs) it really does man it really does i mean that's the thing is like when you have a bad meal the only i the only thing on my mind is like gotta really gotta fix this really gotta get the neck the next one better be good because this is a yeah this is a real disappointment (laughs) to the day like 
everything can be going yeah. well but with that bad meal you're like you know today kind of sucks actually because i had a, a really <laughs> yeah. a real letdown of a meal yeah oh my god how do you how do you handle this is a good question that i really want to know because i wrestle with this every time i'm out and we will be out again so i need to know eating after the shows eating after at, mm. we're, we're done it's late and you you just have that trigger after growing up with food and being rewarded with food. And like, you know, you don't really go partying that much anymore. No. It's like, do you, do you eat a meal after the show or do you try and again, like as the Peruvian people were saying to you, why would you eat so close to bedtime? Tom, who the fuck are you talking to right now? Um, listen, <laughs> after the show is like, uh, uh-huh. I have pillaged a village. I go so deep <laughs> and so hard. I mean, it was like, especially like the the last tour I did last year was all like yeah. pretty big venues. And it would be, yeah. when I would arrive to the venue, I would be like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, the sound and the lights work great. Let's talk about dinner right. now. And so... <laughs> So some of these people, they're like, do you want the meal like right before your show? And you're like, oh, so you're new to this? You've never been around us before? Um, no. So sometimes they would do on a two show night, you know, you have to kind of weigh that thing yeah. of like, do I eat something in between to kind of hold me over? Uh-huh. Um, the best, of course, are the cities where you would go to. Like when you're in cities like New York, Toronto, you can yeah. have a late night, a two show night and you're out at midnight uh-huh. and it's still like, oh yeah, we found like six restaurants that are still serving. Yes. And those would be <laughs> <I know. laughs> the best nights of the tour where you go and you have a yeah. sit down meal at a restaurant at 1230 in the morning. I mean, it's just. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah. And I would do appetizers, <laughs> steaks, and I would make people order multiple dishes and desserts. And that to me is like a perfect night. A, a show that you have a, a great time and then uh, you get to you know kind of uh, so to me that was like the fun of the tour is like raising a glass of wine yeah after a show yeah. eating a meal and you're like can you believe our life we get to do stand up <laughs> in front of all these people <laughs> and now we're having you know fucking a steak yeah. at midnight it's just i, don't know. <laughs> I know <laughs> oh I there's nothing sweeter in the world it's the oh, best, it's so man. good it is it is really fantastic. It's the best yeah well, you're the best, and I have a bread for you. I'm going to drive it to your house. And I'd like I'm to say, drive it to uh, your house. I um, I appreciate your book. I'm reading uh, Tom's new book, The Problem with the International Jew. You make a lot of good points. I didn't really <laughs> think about until you know you you point out a lot of their things. How did, but <laughs> how did you how did you read through the lines? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Uh, wait did i get the title wrong i just want to make sure that they know (laughs) what is it oh you're doing great sorry i read read it completely wrong i read it completely Uh, no the reasons to stay alive but everyone interprets that's the good thing about books people interpret them their own ways uh it is uh no i congratulations (laughs) on it and i'm i'm very happy for you awesome thanks man i really appreciate you doing this this is the this is the first look breaking bread is the the new direction i'm taking this whole podcast thing because it is what i love the most absolutely and uh as soon as uh as soon as we have an opportunity i'll have you have you come in and we'll uh, we'll actually uh sit with each other and, and stuff our big heads i can't wait and i'm excited for this bread man for real all right i'm on my way all right buddy thanks tommy thank you i'll talk to you soon okay all right bye